Facial recognition is quickly evolving beyond a phenomenon we see in movies or that the government would use. Thanks to software companies such as Face.com, anyone can use it in a variety of ways, including tagging photos and social networking. Face.com specifically took its technology a step further recently and added new attributes to its API. Not only can the company read faces, but now it can also detect a subject's age, gender, and even mood. And Gil Hirsch, Face.com CEO, is joining us now from Israel by way of Skype to discuss this new development as well as the concerns that some people continue to have with facial recognition. Thanks for being with us today, Gil. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Well, let's talk about these additional capabilities to Face.com's API. How do they work? So we've, we play around with a number of different attributes that are interesting to people to learn about faces and photos. And obviously we start off with face recognition, but we found that more and more people are just interested in knowing, first of all, where the face is at. So that's face detection, which is detecting a face in a photo. And then we added stuff on it, gender detection, so we can tell if you're male or female. Mm -hmm. And then we added moods. And now very recently we re released our age estimation algorithm, which was more difficult than, than usual to develop, but this one um, is we, we felt it was right for the market and we released it. So I understand that it shows um, a minimum and a, and a maximum age and also the, the confidence level of those numbers. Right, so we're basically providing with four numbers, right? It's mm -hmm. the minimum age, the maximum age, some age estimation, which is really a, an educated guess on what would be um, the appropriate age to estimate for that range. And then on top of all of that, a confidence level, how sure we are at that score. And of course, that confidence level will change based on lighting, pose, general quality features of the photo itself. Mm -hmm. So how has the entire Face.com API improved as a result of, of these new developments? Um, that's interesting. So we, we launched this Thursday, right? And we released everything to um, a number of publications that are focused on developers. Mm -hmm. The story took off, <laughs> had a life of its own, um, <laughs> was republished on, on many other uh, publications, um, and we were amazed by the response. It appears that this has a, a much stronger consumer, um, consumer focus and consumer interest. Uh, so we've been getting a lot of feedback, and it, it, it seems like a lot of uh, people who read the articles are logging into Face.com, checking out the developer tools, even though they're not developers, <laughs> trying out our API sandbox where you can test out the API without coding and trying it on their own photos. That's mm -hmm. usually the first use case, right? Right. Uh, and so we've seen a lot of that and then again a lot of tweets and feedback on their results. That's great. Well, in the announcement, uh, Face.com indicated that fake IDs would be much harder to, to use as a result of the age detection attribute. But what are some of the other ways that you foresee this being used as well? So that, that actually is not a focus for our technology. We're, we are not looking for security or surveillance type uh, applications. We got this original request from, um, from a number of chat services. So video chats uh, are interesting in, in, interested in doing multiple things with us. The first thing, they start out using our face detection to make sure there's a person in a video stream feed. Um, if you remember services like Chat Roulette, mm -hmm. those services were basically shut down because of right. you know improper use of a video stream. So that's one very simple way to to use our technology. And then uh, they asked us for age detection so that we can um, help them to better match you up with someone else to talk with, um, and also monitor for kids. So kids are in certain channels are not allowed or shouldn't be there. Um, and again, it's added value moderation that you were looking to provide. The other type of clients that we had are ad targeting companies that were looking to get more information out of photos and then target the, the ads based on people in photos and that worked pretty well for them as well. Speaking in more of a broader sense, why do you believe that, that facial recognition is, is so important? It's a great question. We're basically a, an identity company. So we're looking at, at people's faces all day and people to us are important. The one thing that we're, we're seeing more and more, and this is true for mobile applications more than anything else, but also on web services, is that people are interested to, uh, to harvest as much information they can from photos and videos, and 
to connect with other people. Really, uh, it's it's a, just another platform to connect with other people, mm-hmm. and it's how we we uh, learn about other people, or we follow up on people, or we follow up on ourselves. Uh, we use that originally to alert you when there's a new photo of yourself on Facebook. We'd send you an alert and say, hey, listen, there's a new photo. It might be you. You know, you're thinking it's you. Um, why don't you take action? And in general, it's just um, a, a stronger, deeper um, value of, of connecting between people that, that we're interested in. With, with all of uh, Face.com's abilities, it seems that developers could use the technology for, for bad rather than good. So has this ever, ever happened, and what does Face.com do to prevent this from happening? Um, so, again, great question. We were uh, over at the Federal Trade Commission a few months ago presenting what we do um, to, to a very large number of, of uh, privacy advocates. Mm-hmm alongside with other bigger companies like Google and Facebook. And our position has been from the get-go is that we allow you to recognize people you know. Mm-hmm. It's not only true for our own applications, Photo Finder, Photo Tagger, you know, the stuff that we do otherwise, but it's also how our developers are using the platform as well. So you have to know the people that you're recognizing. And in that sense, we're providing an additional layer of, of privacy that was mm-hmm basically engineered into everything that we did uh, from day one, not allowing you to just point your camera at someone you know, walking on the street and figure out who they are. Right. So we're not allowing you to do that. Right. So, so there are basically some, some restrictions for developers then? Absolutely. And um, when it comes to the Facebook ecosystem, for instance, you can integrate our API with, with the, the Facebook friends list, for instance. And again, it will only be limited to your friends for using your login details to make sure that you can only access your friends' information. Well, what do you say to people that still have reservations about facial recognition and, for lack of a better phrase, people who are just freaked out by the concept? We, we completely sympathize with, you know, everybody who's creeping out with technology. I mean, some technologies even do that for me. Um, I just know this specific usage, so I'm not, I'm not freaked out by it. Mm-hmm. We're looking for value-add services stuff that makes people feel good about the service, not bad. That's our main focus. That's everything that we've seen uh, coming out of our developer uh, network. We have over 45,000 developers coming out with applications every day. We're not seeing any creepy use. We're actually seeing a lot of value added use. And I hope, again, this was our cause to, to get this technology, bring it to the people, and, and use it for everyday use rather than security stuff. A lot of the 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 creepy level is coming in from Hollywood, right? Because Hollywood only uh, presented face recognition as this one this this one trick pony, right? You can only do surveillance and, and follow up on people. We're trying to do something very different. Right. Well, the International Biometrics and Identification Association has also raised some, some red flags about this and has suggested self-regulatory measures for the industry. Do you think that this is necessary? We've done a lot of self-regulatory already, right, um, without being asked for it because we're interested in the, the end-user experience. Mm-hmm. And we figure that here are a few things that we do not want to happen, right? We don't want people to be recognized without their permission or uh, by people they do not know, et cetera, et cetera. And so I believe in that, mm-hmm. and I think uh, it'll make sense to have some industry-level uh, guideline into how, what it means, you know, how, how to control it, how to do it. And in many senses, because we're serving our technology directly from the cloud, we're very well positioned to, um, to actually enforce it. Mm-hmm. You know, because we're already putting those links in, you can use our technology um, under those constraints. And, um, and in that sense, it just works out of the box. All right. Thank you so much for talking with us, Gil. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Reporting for Web Pro News, I'm Abby Johnson.